Second Kings chapter 17, verse 32, I'll read verse 33 as well. The children of Israel, before they entered into captivity, this was their condition. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places, which sacrificed for them in the high places. Verse 33. I like you to see this contradiction. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. After the manner of the nations whom they carried away from theirs, they feared the Lord and then joined it to serving their own gods. I am speaking on the subject, the tragedy of double standard existence. They feared the Lord and served their own gods. It's like going to the herbalist on Monday after leaving church on Sunday. It's like going to the cult meeting on, on Thursday after leaving midweek service on Wednesday. The tragedy of double standard existence. I want to say only four things this afternoon and it's very fast. Number one, we cannot serve God on our own terms. We can only serve God on his own terms. We can never bring God down to our level. We can only take ourselves to his level. We can never adjust the word of God to suit our standard of life. We can never adjust the word of God to suit our standard of life. We can only adjust our lives to the standard of the word. Don't forget that. We can never adjust the word of God to suit our standards of life. We can only adjust our lives to suit the standard of the world. Any fear of God that does not change lifestyle is a useless profession. Any devotion that does not change character is a wasted effort. They fear the Lord and they serve their own gods. Number two, we cannot hold on to our own ways and do his will. We can't. We cannot hold on to our own ways and do his will. I'd like you to note this. There can be no marriage between the ways of man and the will of God. That marriage does not exist. There can be no marriage between the ways of man and the will of God. It does not exist. If we want to see the will of God, we must line up with the ways of God. First Kings chapter 18 verse 21. Elijah told the children of Israel. How long will you limp between two opinions? If, if the Lord be Lord, follow him. If it is Baal, follow him. They, they feared the Lord and served their own gods. 
They feared the Lord and continued drinking alcohol. They feared the Lord and continued night clubbing. They feared the Lord and continued ungodly associations. They claimed to fear the Lord and it didn't change anything. There can be no marriage between the ways of God, of man, and the will of God. It was Ketrin Kuhlman that said, there can be no two wills in one person. Anybody who has two wills is a madman. He has two minds. He's a madman. There can be no two wills. It's either the will of God is, is at work in our lives or the will of, of man or the will of the devil. It can never be double. That is insanity. Thirdly, we cannot fit into the world and fit with God at the same time. We can't. And don't misunderstand me. We are in the world, but not of the world. We cannot fit into the world and fit with God at the same time. You can never, you see, there is no genuine believer that can have the company of unbelievers comfortably. Put it in another way. Standard unbelievers, standard, that is the real unbelievers, can never be comfortable around the genuine child of God. Never. Capital letter N-E-V-E-R red underlined. Never. Your life convicts them. Your integrity is a rebuke on their iniquity. When they come close to you, they run away without you preaching. They look at you and they feel like you are condemning them and you have not said the word. Take your seat. It is not possible. I mean, there are people who fit in perfectly in church. And then when they go outside church and you see them with drunkards and smokers and lesbians and those kind of people, they also fit in perfectly. And you are wondering how is that possible that a pig could be comfortable in the company, a lion could be comfortable in the company of pigs. How? They fear the Lord. And they serve their own gods. You know at times I'm very confused. Because of the confusion that I see in some people's lives. The other day I saw somebody came out for, I think for a testimony or something. Zero makeup. Like ancient saints. No earring, nothing. But come and check out the dress. Head is tied. Before you can say, praise the Lord, this is, person is looking modest, then the back is under pressure, the chest is under pressure, the side is under pressure, the cleave, oh my God. What confusion is this? I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. What confusion is this? I don't know if you, if you understand what I'm talking about. What confusion are we dealing with? I've seen someone before who said that she had never had anything to do with a man in her life, which was plus, positive, clap, clap, clap. But if you saw the appearance and they said that person was prostitutious, you wouldn't doubt. What a confusion. Am I, am I speaking something to somebody here? They fear the Lord and serve their gods. How can I hold to the ways of God with one hand and hold on to my ways with another hand? 
it is the foundation for captivity. That was what led Israel to captivity. God said, since you like their gods, let me push you into their land. Since you like the idols of these people, let me push, push you into their land. The time has come, my dear brothers and sisters, where we must make a choice. Joshua chapter 24 verse 15. He said, and if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other standard unbelievers, standard, that is the real unbelievers, can never be comfortable around the genuine child of God. Never, capital letter N-E-V-E-R, red, underlined. Never. Your life convicts them. Your integrity is a rebuke on their iniquity. When they come close to you, they run away without you preaching. They look at you and they feel like you are condemning them and you have not said the word. Take your seat. Never. How can you be bowing down to the Almighty and be bowing down to another God? We cannot be under the authority of the Almighty and be under the authority of the world at the same time. The time has come where we must choose who we are serving. Is God speaking to somebody here? People are categorized into five groups. There may be more. Are you ready for that? Find out where you are, number one. Those, or A, for A, those under the authority of the Almighty. Number two, those under the authority of society. The first group, they are under the authority of Jehovah. They take their bearing from the Almighty. Number two, those who are under the authority of society. Number C, those, nah, nah, uh, those who are under the authority of the Almighty, you know that the word of God rules them. God rules them. Those under the authority of society, it, they, they, they line up with society. It is a matter of majority carries the vote. It's a matter of, is this the current thing that everybody is doing? Then let us go. These people don't have a mind of their own. They are, they are, they are, they are, they are helplessly under crowd control. The control of the crowd. Helplessly. Hopelessly. Number C, those under the authority of company. Now, society is at large, but company is few. That is your friends. There are those who have stopped coming to church or stopped doing certain things because a particular friend says something. The authority of company, like Samson. Four. Is that four? Those under the authority of materialism. Under the authority of mammon. Money sends them. So the first group, almighty God is their God. The second group, society is their God. The third group, a friend is their God. The fourth group, money is their God. Standard unbelievers, standard, that is the real unbelievers, can never be comfortable around the genuine child of God, never, capital letter N-E-V-E-R, red, underlined, never. Your life convicts them. Your integrity is a rebuke on their iniquity. When they come close to you, they run away without you preaching. They look at you and they feel like you are condemning them and you have not said the word. Take your seat. Are under the authority of pleasure. So, it is like they feared God, 
and still worship society. Or they feared God, but what their friend says is more important than what God said. Or they feared God, but once God and money clash, they choose money. Hello? Or they fear God, but they cannot pray for one hour a day, but they can watch a six hour movie non stop. It's a, it's a tragedy. It leads to captivity. It ended the children of Israel in chains. Do you remember how many years they spent in captivity? Anybody remembers? Correct. 70 years. In fact, it was entering 71. Until Daniel went before God and said, oh, Prophet Jeremiah prophesied 70 years. Why has captivity not ended? They were in chains because of the tragedy of the double standard existence. How many of you know that real unbelievers don't pretend to be Christians? You didn't hear what I'm saying? They carry it great and blow it in your face. <sighs> Can walk hand in hand with his girlfriend on the road. Bouncing. Night clubbing publicly. It is only Christians that do their own Nicodemusly. While your, 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 your classmate is not afraid of holding cigarette, you are ashamed of holding a Bible. While they are not ashamed to say, I am going to, um, to, to, to that joint over there, you are ashamed to say you are going for service. It is service time in case they mock you. While they are not ashamed to dress naked, you are feeling somehow to dress decent. My dear brothers and sisters, the time has come where in order to avoid captivity, we must totally embrace the Almighty. I pray that someone here will not be a victim of the double standard existence. 